Um, so a quick introduction on my side. My name is Justin. Uh, I'm a member of the Fedora DNI team, but I've also been pretty hands-on with the Fedora Docs project too. Um, in 2018, we had a Docs fad where we uh, did a lot of stuff about how we think about or thinking about how we organize our docs, thinking about the tools we use. And so over the last two years, a lot of the Fedora documentation, um, which was previously in a doc site or in the wiki, um, we've now started to move over to this ASCII doc based uh, publishing mechanism. Um, the tool, the tool chain is called Antora. Um, that's what's actually doing the publishing in the docs, but we're not going to get super into that. Um, what I'm really going to be covering in today's talk is, it's not really a talk, it's more of a shadow session. So I'm gonna, I am going to talk a little bit about how the DNI docs are structured, what things we're publishing there right now, and a little bit about our docs efforts from over the years. Then we're going to do two, two different screen shares. The first one is going to be editing from the web browser, so you can edit these docs straight from Pagor. Um, the second one, which if you want to stay for, it's totally optional if you just wanted to get a quick introduction. Um, but the, the last part of this is going to be more advanced, where I'll be working in the command line, um, rendering the docs locally. So if you're interested in that, stay tuned, and we'll, we'll get to the more uh, detailed, hands-on part towards the end. So I'm going to shift over to my screen. If you're in the hop in chat, you can double click on the screen share to make it go um, maximized or full screen, just so it's a little easier to see. Um, so the page I have open here right now is the Fedora Docs site, which I'll go ahead and link in the hop in chat. Um, not much to talk about here other than this is where we publish our docs. You can see we have a couple different pages. This, this page is our landing page, our index page, where we talk generally about diversity and inclusion in Fedora broadly, some of the things that we've done. There's a page about the team that talks a little bit about a um, little bit of overlap, actually. We have an issue open for that, which we will be talking about. Um, but there's also other pages, like we have a page about all the events that we've done over the years and some of the outreach we've done. Um, we also have a lot of notes from the demographic survey that we did at our 2017 Hackfest. Um, and also things about Fedora Women's Day and how to get involved with the team, um, things that are helpful, like a meeting, like we have a meeting script, you know, if you want to run a meeting or if you want to get a meeting on the agenda, like we put some of that workflow stuff in our docs. So, you know, that's great that we have that content, but that's not really what this shadow session is about. We want to try to change some of this stuff, right? So for context, the doc site used to be all of our Fedora, was used to all be in the Fedora Wiki. This is from June 2018, so this is like two years ago. The challenge with that was that the Wiki would frequently fall out of date. And um, also, it was just hard to connect different pages together. Like, we have that nice little sidebar where you can click to the different pages. Um, don't have that in the Wiki. So just for some historical context, like, that's where everything used to be, but we're really big on moving to the docs because it makes it easier to organize things um, and keep up with where all of our different information is, which is easier, you know, if you're a new contributor and you're not super tuned into the wiki. Um, so we are going to be talking a lot about this Pagor repo today. Like I mentioned, it would be great if you can go ahead and uh, make a fork of that to your personal Pagor account. Um, we'll if you are a member of the DNI team, you can commit directly to the repo, but the best practice is usually to work from your own fork. So that's the way I'm going to be showing um, in this presentation today. So I'm hoping that um, if you haven't if you haven't forked the repo yet, go ahead and uh, take a minute to do that. But I'm going to go ahead and jump right into this. So. The first way I'm going to talk about editing the Fedora docs is from the web browser. So this is the easiest way, I think, to really edit our docs. You don't have to set up any tools. You, you, know, you just have to log into Pagor and edit. So, um, so once you're in, in your own fork or wherever you're working on the DNI docs, um, you'll notice that you know, there's this Files tab right over here. So if you click that, you can start to actually go through some of the different files in, in the repo. There's a lot of stuff in here, but there's really only um, 
one thing that matters, which is in the modules folder. It's a little annoying, but you know you have to uh, click through here a couple of times, and then you'll see pages. And ta-da! Here's all of our um, all of our docs pages, the actual source content that gets published onto the docs.fedoraproject.org website. Um, so you can open any of these up and, you know, it's going to show you the raw source text in ASCII doc format. Um, I'm not going to talk a lot about ASCII doc today, but I will share some links that are, that I always keep bookmarked that help me when I'm working in ASCII doc, just to reference the syntax, um, and some of the other best practices, like one of the things you'll see in these docs as well which is might be different if you've never worked in docs before um, or in Fedora docs, I should say, but every sentence is its own line. Um, just kind of a thing, no matter what tool, no matter where you're editing, that's a, a, for, uh, a, a best practice we do for a specific reason, because when you go and make a um, pull request with your changes to the docs, it's a lot easier to review what you're actually changing if every sentence is on its own line. It makes the get diffs really pretty and really easy to review. So I don't have to spend, not just me, but anybody um, can spend less time trying to figure out like where the line breaks are. And it, it just is easier to review. So just keep that in mind that whenever you are editing the docs, you always want to add a um, hard return, a new line after every period. So today I'm looking at, um, so let's look at, I'm looking at the demographic survey uh, page here. So um, you might have one or two options depending on where you're looking. If you're in your fork, you should just see the edit button, but I'm actually in the main repo. So it's saying edit in your fork because that's usually the better thing to do. So in your in your editor or in your in your web browser you can go ahead and click that um edit or actually i guess i was going to do the events page in my demo so i am going to edit the events page and i'm going to walk you through this um this page really quick so i don't think i can resize that that's a little annoying um so let's pretend that i have um i'm going to add a new event i'm going to add fedora nest shadow session with uh, our docs. And, you know, normally I would add a lot more there, but, you know, this is just an example, right? So um, so let's say I added, you know, more info about the this Nest session we did, right? Um, I'm going to talk through these four things really quick. The first one is the email address, which isn't really huge, but if you care, just remember that this email address is public information. So um, it is... It, it is public, whatever email address you choose, um, just an aside. But I'm really going to talk more about the branch part, because this is actually really important and is one of the biggest pain points I see for folks who are doing this. It's it's um, The default is to commit straight to master, but it's actually a better practice is if you do what's called feature branching, and if you split this out into a new branch. So it. There's a couple reasons for doing this. One is that from a Git perspective, it'll be easier to manage um, your fork. Like I never commit to the master branch. I always keep my forks master branch synchronized to the upstream repo just because I find you avoid Git conflicts and some of the more painful parts of Git if you can not commit to the same default branch as the upstream. So in this case, it's the master branch. So I'm just going to name this one new nest event. Like it doesn't matter what the name is, just do something unique. Um, commit title. This is, you know, nothing, nothing different here. I'm just, but it is, it is important to actually make something meaningful because this is what's going to be your pull request. This is what, you know, an actual DNI team member or, or anyone, not just, you know, whatever docs repo you're looking in, someone's actually going to read this stuff, right? Like another, like a real human being. So it's important to write something that's a real human being could, could understand and, uh, make sense of. So I'm going to say add Fedora nest shadow session. And let's pretend I added pictures, screenshots, and summaries of the nest session I did. Um, you know, you don't have to write a, an essay in here, but just something that makes sense, something that would actually help someone review your changes, or more importantly, understand why, why you're making the changes. That's really what, um, 
is, is important to note in here. So, okay, I did that. I did my whole edits. I added all this stuff. Um, if you're working with ASCII doc the first time, it might be a little awkward, but don't worry about it too much. Like that's why we do the pull request process is there's a review process. Someone will actually review your changes and um, give you feedback if everything looks good and they'll merge it. Or if there's something that needs to be changed, you'll, you'll have a chance, you know, you're, you're not going to be writing changes straight to the doc site. So there is a review process. The team is really friendly. So, you know, don't, it's good to double check your syntax and stuff, but don't, don't panic if you're not really familiar with ASCII doc. Um, so that's it. We'll do commit changes. And uh, it's gonna, Pagor is going to commit my changes. It's actually making that new branch that I made, the events nest, what you I'm gonna call it, um, new nest event branch. So it made that branch and you can see, hey, this branch contains one commit that's not in the upstream Fedora diversity master branch. And I have this handy button to create a pull request. Um, yeah, so let's do that. Let's create a pull request. And uh, it's going to take, you know, just like I typed in earlier, there's my commit message summary. There's the commit message description. It pre-populates the pull request with that info. You can see I have my uh, super simple change that I'm not going to merge because it's um, just an example. But let's create the pull request just to show what it looks like. So. Now you'll see there's a new pull request open in the Fedora docs repo for the diversity team. Um, you can see the files change, the commit messages, and all of this I did straight from Pagor, the web interface. Didn't even clone the repo. Um, this isn't really doc specific, but on our side for the DNI team, usually if you make a, a change to our docs, you can expect that. Um, I try to always assign someone, if someone's going to review the change and take responsibility to be the one to merge it, I usually try to assign someone. Um, but usually expect like within, it also depends how big your changes are or whether you're changing something like a policy on our team, which is something that we all, the team all votes on versus like adding an event. If it's something simple, expect within a week. Um, but there's some of the bigger stuff that, I mean, this is just an example. And I think really the point is um, you can expect like for simple changes and just improving the docs, it's usually a week turnaround time. Um, so that was the web interface part of this. Um, I will go ahead and do a quick pause if there's questions in the chat about anything I covered in the web interface piece before I move to the more advanced part. And if you do want to jump out, now, now is a good place if you want to transition to something else. Um, the, the rest of this shadow session is going to be more technical. I'm going to be working in the command line, rendering the docs locally, showing how that actually looks. Um, so if you want to, if you want to learn that, stay right here. But otherwise, um, that is the direction we're going to go next. So I don't see any questions in the chat, but I will keep watching that if anything comes up. So I'm going to go ahead and update my screen share and go to the place where I spend a lot of my time. Cool. So I think I'm sharing my 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 terminal window again. Um, so again, as a reminder, if you double click on the screen share, you can make that go full size so it'll be a little easier to see. I'm going to zoom in so you can actually read what's on my screen. Um, so just to get some context really quick, um, I have, uh, if you're doing this for the first time, you take it from your fork, do git clone, um, and clone your fork going back to that feature branch workflow. I look, I talked about earlier. Um, I always add a new remote to the upstream and you actually have to do that. Like git add remote upstream url blah 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 um so and you can get that all from the pagor web interface there's that little clone menu in the top right corner that's where you can find this stuff um so this is how i normally like initialize my my git repos is i always have my fork and i always have an upstream the origin and the upstream um so with that out of the way, um, let's talk about the branches a little bit. So I'm gonna do the I'm gonna do the same thing that I just did in that last 
pull request just to do a pretty easy comparison. Um, so I'm also going to try not to use my aliases because those are not intuitive. So I'm going to make a new branch and I'm on the master branch. Maybe one thing that's important to do here that I always do before I start working is I always make sure that if I'm in the master branch or, or the default branch, whatever it is, um, I have the latest changes from upstream. In this case, I did this five minutes before I went on video. So I know I have the latest changes, but what that's doing is I'm actually getting in, you know, making sure that I have the latest changes, the latest commits from upstream. So I do. So I'm going to go ahead and make my uh, feature branch, oops, which is going to be git checkout. I'm going to use the deck, make a new branch. And let's say change, um, we're going to do the same thing, change events, um, different branch name, but same edit. So I like to use Vim, but of course you can use any editor that pleases your, your heart. I'm not going to talk about this. Um, ooh, translation questions. That's that's a great question, actually. And I'm, I'm, I want to make sure I cover that. Um, so for this edit, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm not going to spend a lot of time in here, but you know, going to do the same thing. Fedora, oops, um, Fedora Nest Shadow Session on editing the docs and pretending there is a lot more content here. So that's great. Um, so we have that in the events page. Um, I'm in my feature branch. So let's say I do a bunch of, I do all my edits. I do all the things I want to do in my text editor of choice. Um, I'm ready to make my pull request now. So I always do, well, depending how your workflow is, you know, you always have to add the Git page to your staging area. So I've added it. Um, now I'm going to commit it. I always add the um, dash S flag to my Git commits. Maybe that would, this would be a good, just quick chance to actually explain that, um, what that actually means, because I get that a lot. So yeah, um, sign off. This is just kind of this, um, basically it just means that it adds this line that says signed off by your name and your email to the git commit. And it's just a way of certifying that you're agreeing that you have the rights that the work you're doing is actually yours. You know, that you have the rights. This is your independent changes and you're agreeing to share it under the same license as the original project. Um, not really important, but it's just a habit I do and people ask about it. So that's why I always mention it. Um, but I'm going to do that now, git commit, and you can see there's my signed off message. But I'm going to do the same thing here. Added a, or I'm going to say events, add a nest 2020 session to our events. I'm going to say uh, it was the shadow session. It was great. So much fun. So I'm going to do that, and I have to type in password. Um, cool. So I made the git commit. That's done. That's on my feature branch. Um, and now if you're working locally, as a reminder, you know, all those changes are still local. I haven't actually pushed those anywhere. So let's actually go ahead and push these changes I have locally to my fork repo in Pagor. So for the first time I do this, um, I am going to push my feature branch to my fork, I'm gonna do that. And if you're in the command line, you'll also note that uh, Pagor gives you this handy little URL there. Oh, what do you know? Create a pull request. It knew exactly what I wanted to do. Um, I'm not going to click that because that means I have to change my screen share again, but you would click that up and you would get the exact same pull request interface that I just showed earlier in the web PR part of this talk. Um, nothing too crazy there, but the last thing I, I do want to talk about, which was the Docker piece, the, the containers. Um, so you'll notice that in every docs repo that, you know, there's also um, this template repo that the docs team maintains. That's kind of the base for any new uh, docs site. Um, but it comes with this build and preview script. And that is how you're actually going to say, you know, we made the changes, but you want to test. 
this is also really key if you're doing um cross page references like x refs it, you it's a good idea to test your changes because that syntax can be really confusing so this assumes you already have um docker uh, podman a container runtime installed um so I'm going to go ahead and run these scripts. And you'll see, oh, this build script is using Podman to run in an isolated environment, da 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 So it's actually building. It's using the docs tool change, um, ASCII binder and, uh, and Tora, all that good stuff. And you, say, and you see, hey, OK, here's the docs site. So now I am going to have to update my screen share because um, I am going to open this in a new browser window. And you can see that I did open it because there's all the web traffic logs. Um, let me update my screen share one more time. Ta-da. And you might have to double click my screen again if you want to see it full size. But a uh, big thing you'll notice here is localhost. Yeah, I'm all local. This is all on my machine. I'm not on the official Fedora doc site. So going to go to the events page because that's where my change was. And uh, ta-da, there it is. Um, and if I was looking at this normally, I'd be, oh, wow, we used bold on all of those. So I probably want to make that bold so it matches the syntax of all the others. Um, one of the great things about you know testing the changes locally is you can actually see these things and be like, oh, that's, that's weird. I should make that bold. Um, anyways, if you have issues with that, it's likely... Um, I know I've had troubles with the, the local build preview before as well. Um, if you have challenges, I recommend jumping into the Fedora Docs IRC channel or Matrix group. The folks there are really friendly and are really, they do the stuff day in, day out. Um, so if you have troubles with it, come reach out to us there. Um, it's all usually going to be in the container runtime piece. And this is also true whether you're working in the DNI team docs or like any any doc site like that was actually something like that build script is something that's bundled in that fedora docs template project um so this is basically true if you want to test your changes this is basically true of um any fedora docs repo so i would have liked to have gone a little more in detail to maybe show some of the more like interesting stuff like doing those cross page links and some of the other syntax um if you are interested in those things, I suggest you hang out. If you have a DNI team specific request, just join the DNI team chat and we can help you with the docs there. If you have a general question about the docs, again, plug in the Fedora docs team, Fedora dash docs on Freenode. I think at Fedora underscore docs on Telegram. Um, folks there are happy to help with that, but. Um, I won't have time to cover that today because my session, this were officially done in one minute and the keynote is in five. So I'll take a quick moment. I know this was kind of a lot to cover in the time that we had. Um, I hope it was helpful, uh, but I'll take any questions or if you want to come on the video too, happy to answer questions on audio video or in the text chat. Uh, oh, oh, there, is, there was the question about the translations, um, which I did see. I thank you. Eduard and Misk for jumping on that in the chat. Um, I'll just mention ooh, uh, translate.fedoraproject.org. Um, so this is the site that we do our translations on. And like very recently, as in the last month, um, we started getting our docs repos better synchronized there. Um, I don't know what the right way to describe it would be, but again, um, Jebek. Uh, he's the person who really drove a lot of this, who drove most of this work. Um, he's a great person to ask, but there should be, a, yeah, you can see, actually see, here's some of the Fedora docs repos, like the Fedora release notes. That's probably one of the most important ones in terms of translations because that, that happens every release. Um, now, obviously F26 is not really important right now. Um, I guess there's not an easy way to filter old pages from the old, um, but you'll see if you go probably to the last page, there'll be Fedora 33. Um, this is only gonna be a thing with like the, the release specific docs, like the release notes. Most docs aren't gonna be um, structured this way, but uh, this is the release notes. So it's kind of the special snowflake of uh, 
of our docs. But anyways, this is where you can you can make those edits and translate our docs into your own local languages. So you do that all through the Weblate uh, the Weblate site. Um, this makes me realize I need to make sure that the diversity docs are in here. So that is a great thing that I'm going to follow up with after this. Um, but this is yeah generally this is where you'll do the translations and I am personally like I'm very interested in trying to um, bring more translations to the DNI team docs because that's I think it makes a lot of the work that we do more accessible and we have a lot of folks who do the um, local Fedora Women's Day events like I'd love to get more Spanish content because I know we have folks who are Spanish speakers that use our our a lot of the DNI team docs so. You know, that's kind of my my one thing that comes to mind. And Hindi, for sure, as well, because we do a lot. That's the second one. We have South America and a lot of events in India as well. I just know it's trickier with the local languages in India. Um, but cool. I don't want to hold everyone up from the keynote, so I am going to go ahead and stop there. If you have questions, come say hi. If you have DNI team specific questions about our docs, come say hi in our uh, team chat room. Um, Fedora dash diversity on Freenode IRC or at Fedora diversity on Telegram. Uh, if you have general Fedora docs questions or questions about a repo that is not the DNI team docs, check out the Fedora docs team. Uh, they are they are friendly and nice folks. They are they are they do not bite. They will help answer your questions. So with that, I will see you all around Nest and enjoy the keynote. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks for tuning in, everyone.